These guys can quote the word. It's not work. The word only works when the spirit of God is mixed with the word. So when you speak it in the spirit of that's why I love what Paul said. Paul said, I have not come to you with the mere words, but I've come to you with the demonstration of the spirit power. Now when you miss the word with the spirit, there is power. There is Amen. So tonight we're going to be dealing with the outcome of prayer. Prayer. We're going to talk about prayer again. I know we dealt so much on prayer the last few months, uh, weeks, and our last Bible study we dealt with the different types of prayer. I mean, if you were here that Wednesday, <laughs> I know many. I mean, I, I received so many questions, you know, on my phone from that message, I, and I hope that the message is actually uh, on CD. Get the tape. Uh, the CD is going to bless you. We taught on different types of prayer. And it was very powerful. We have so many questions that night and continued even into the week. Questions about some of the things that we talked about uh, last Wednesday. But let's read tonight our scriptures. We'll talk about prayer tonight, different dimension of it. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 16b. James 5, verse 16b. So the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You know, so one thing was understand in the scripture, it talks about effectual, it mentions fervent, and then of course prayer, righteous man avails then much. How many of you believe you are righteous in this house? How many of you are seen as saved by grace? Or righteousness of God? Which, which one? <laughs> so it means I am the righteousness of God. Say it again. Say I am righteous. Look at someone tell them I am righteous. Whether you like it or not, I am righteous. <laughs> you see, it is that some people tend to judge you and your righteousness based on the things you do. But your righteousness has nothing to do with your doing. Amen? Righteousness is different from godliness. Godliness is living like God. And we need to be all godly. We need to have godly living. We need to live godly life. But when you say you are righteous, it basically means right standing with God. So it means right standing. That means with God, you have you are you are in in, in, the, in the mind of God. You are righteous, right standing with Him. You can come to Him boldly to the throne of grace. You can come to Him boldly and obtain mercy in time of need. Amen. So the Bible says that the, the effectual fervent prayer, fervent prayer, serious prayer, serious minded prayer, putting your heart in it prayer, not casual prayer, passionate prayer. It did not say the quiet, slow, just moving around prayer. No. You got to put your heart into it. Heart prayer. Heart. Some of you know how to scream and shout until when it comes to pray. They say, God knows my heart. The Bible said the, the effectual fervent prayer. So in terms of righteousness, you are already righteous. That you know. But you have to put some passion in your prayer. You got to believe in your prayer. I preached a message, uh, I believe months ago, or maybe years ago, he said, uh, having faith in your faith. You got to believe in what you're saying. You have to have passion in your prayer. Because you cannot, you know, if there's no passion in your prayer, those prayer does not move. I just they move God because we think, you know, maybe that becomes, that's clear to some of us. When there's fervency in your prayer, you get result in your prayer. It is the purpose and the plan of God that every one of his children have result in their prayer. God doesn't want you um, 
uh, not want you to pray. And the reason why people don't want to pray any longer is because they don't see any result in their prayer. They prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing changes. And of course, you get discouraged when nothing is happening. But by the time you pray fervently, passionately about what you need, about, about what you desire from God, God hears you. It doesn't mean he doesn't hear you when you pray quietly. But there's something about fervency because your heart is in it. You really mean business. Amen? I don't know if you have meant business in prayer before. All right. Some of you mean business when things go wrong. Do it all the time. Don't wait until you are pushed against the wall. Let there be some passion in your prayer. And when you put passion in your prayer, you're going to get some results. Amen? Now let's go through some few scriptures here as we, we have some few things to share with us tonight. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. What you don't know can kill you. Let me say it again. What you don't know can kill you. What you don't know can be a disadvantage to you. So the Bible says in all you're getting, get some understanding. Know something. It is what you know. You are free. Amen? Knowledge is power. The Bible, has, the Bible tells us to study God's word so we can know. When you know, you will grow. And when you grow, you will glow. So if you want to shine in your life, you got to know the word of God. There is no growth in ignorance. There is no growth if you are ignorant. And you cannot shine if you are not growing. Amen? So we must understand some things I'll be sharing with us tonight would challenge some of us, but it would give some of us some understanding in the area of prayer. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Amen? Say, for everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, find. And to him that knocks, the door shall be opened. But how come many of us have been asking and seeking and knocking, and you're not receiving, and you're not finding, and the door is still locked? What is happening? Do you blame God? No. God is always constant. It has to be something we're not doing or something we don't know that is not giving us the, the, the required result. Because God would never go back on his word. So we have to search ourselves. If I should pray for someone who have multiple sclerosis, for, his, for example, and the person don't get healed, I don't go back and blame the person or go back and say, maybe I don't have the anointing for MS. That is the easy way out. I should go back home, get on my knees, and say, God, what happened? What happened last night? Because God told me that, and you also, not just me, you, he said, the will of God concerning you is to do what? Heal the sick and do what again? Cast out devils and do what else? Heal the sick, cast out devils and raise the dead. He would somebody say, heal the sick. Say, heal the sick. Cast out devils and raise the dead. So if the dead is not being raised, then whose fault? That's not God's fault. Get back on your knees and have an encounter with God through prayer. 
He said, God, what's happening? I prayed for a dead man and he didn't wake up. You should drive it to a place of prayer. You cannot say, maybe, maybe uh, my anointing is not for raising the dead. Or my anointing is not for healing the sick. Every one of us have been called to heal the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. Say with me, heal the sick. He did not say pray for the sick. He said heal them. I know some of us would, would prefer if, if, if the Bible says God, if the Bible says pray for the sick, it's not say heal the sick. That means that you have the ability through the power of God to heal the sick and cast out devils and raise the dead. So if it's not happening in your life, then you got to go get on your knees and seek God in a place of prayer. So you can have an encounter with God again and again and again. One encounter with God may not be enough in our lives. Amen? Amen. That's why I love those who come up for prayer all the time because receiving more, I mean, we are so blessed here. We are so blessed here. What you experience here is something I desired so much when I was in churches, but the pastors will not release the anointing on their life. They just keep it until a special occasion. But here we just, God just let it flow. The river is flowing. Amen? So anyone can come out and say, you know what, I just want another touch again, another touch again, another touch again, because each time you are touched, something changes. So when, but when God said, As shall you shall receive, seek you would find, knock should open unto you. God really means it. But a lot of Christians, their prayers are not being answered. But why is our prayers not being answered? I will share a few reasons with us tonight. And let's look at the book of James chapter 4 verse 3. Bible says that ye ask. James 4 verse, let's look at James 4 verse 3. That is not James 4. Ye ask and receive not. Because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. So many of us ask but never receive because we ask wrongly. We ask amiss. We ask with the wrong intention. We ask with the wrong reasons behind in our hearts. We ask in amiss so we can consume it upon our lust. You're asking for God to bless you so you can show your neighbors that you are better than them. Or you want God to give you a new house, some of us, so that your enemy would know that, that, you get, that, he, that your job is better paid than them, than theirs. When you ask amiss, when you ask wrongly, you don't receive. When you ask because of personal agendas, when you ask God, for anything wrongly, you don't get results. So that means there is a right way to ask and there's a wrong way to ask. When you ask God for anything, you must make sure that what you are asking him for is not based on your selfish ambition. Amen? Amen? Are you following me? If you ask him for the right reason, God will always answer those prayers. There was a lady I, I, I was told, this story, was asking God to get married to, to one man of God. This man is already married. It's actually Kenneth Copeland. And um, this woman was praying that his wife should die so she can marry the man of God. Now, will God answer that kind of prayer? No. That's selfishness. So you're asking a miss, wrong reason. You're asking so you can 
receive something that is not due you. You're asking for the wrong reason. And then when you ask a means, now that is a, that's an extreme example, but when you ask for things to consume your consume upon your own lust, you don't receive from God. So make sure when you are asking God, you are searching your heart. That what you are asking for is for his own glory. Amen? Amen. You know, I want this church to, to get to a place in, in your life where you really ask God for things that will further his kingdom. Because when you take care of God's business, God will take care of yours. If you if, if, if you asking God for something that would improve or increase or that would elevate his kingdom, God will make sure that your needs are met. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things you are seeking for will be added unto you. So you must put God first in your prayers. When you get to pray in the morning, tomorrow, tonight, put him first. Ask God, God, what is on your heart? What do you want me to pray about? There is nothing wrong about praying about the things you need. But I believe we should be matured enough to know that life is not just about what you need. Amen? But life is more than that. Life is more than the things you want God to do for you. Life is, is, is far beyond that. But when we ask God anything, he said he would answer. But we should have the knowledge to ask him according to his will, but not for our own lust, not for our own personal satisfaction or selfish reasons, I should say. Not for selfish reasons, but you should ask him. To propel his kingdom forward. Amen. So when you get into your time of prayer. Don't think about you. Are you following me? Can somebody please move this a little bit. This stuff is bothering me. Can somebody move this AC. And I face this direction. Of, maybe this direction. I don't think they want to face you. A little bit. Um, just move it. I say AC. The fan. Just face to the wall. That's good. Thank you. God bless you. What, what was I saying? Amen. So you are definitely listening. Amen. So don't always focus your prayers on you. We must grow up as God's children. Let your prayer life not be about you. We've talked about different forms of prayers. Don't just gather your knees and make a, a list for God on what you want him to do for you. God desires more than making a list for him. Amen? God knows what you need. God truthfully wants to meet your need. I mean, of us believe that. God wants, God wants you happy. God wants you full of joy. God wants you, I mean, God wants everything you need for you to receive them. But you should have this sense in your spirit. Not always get on your knees because you want God to give you something. Get on your knees and pray and worship God. And, and, and practice the form of prayer that we spoke about last week beside the prayer of supplication. You know, have a prayer of worship. A prayer of thanksgiving. A prayer where you just, you just you spend time in God's presence. So you can really mature and grow in him. Because many Christians are so consumed with what they want. And that's where there's so much fight and bickering and envy and jealousy and strife in our lives. Because we're just so concerned about us. That's what the Bible calls selfishness. When it says selfishness. When it's all about you, when you think about yourself more than anything else. 
And many of us think about ourselves maybe more often than anyone else. <laughs> many of us like ourselves so much that nobody else matters. Tell your neighbor I love you more than me. <laughs> Do you believe it? Do they believe you? <laughs> Do you believe them? Now, that's a little tough, right? If the Bible says you should, you should prefer the other person. You, you should even elevate them more than yourself. Learn to promote others and not promote yourself. Praise other people. How many people have you praised today? How many did you praise today beside your wife or your children? Even some don't even praise their children. When you promote others, God will promote you. When you elevate others, God will elevate you. But if, if you only want to elevate yourself and talk about yourself and tell God about you and it's about you and it's about you, that God has no chance to talk about you because you are doing the job already. Ah, uh, you know you don't do a good job enough. Amen? So we must focus our time with God, not just on ourselves, but on others and on Him. When you pray for other people, you don't do it upon your own lust. Imagine everybody prays for everybody else, and all of our needs will be met. If you prayed for me and I prayed for you, God meets your, answers your prayer because I'm praying for you. And answers yours because you're praying for me. Then all our needs are met. Because we're not praying based on our own selfish reasons. We're not just praying to meet our needs, but you're praying for the other person. We want to have a church that prays for each other and not just praying about themselves. Amen? So when you pray and miss your prayers, don't get answered. So I will challenge you that from today, when you start praying, spend more time praying for other people. Spend more time praying for... If, I, if, if you do what I do, if you just ask God, God, tell me, what should I pray about today for, for Sister Sherry? He will give you the list. I don't know if you have done that before. Not many. If you go home tonight, get a piece of paper and say, God, what should I pray now about sister, just any sister's name? And God will give you a list of items to pray about. If you do that every time, God will always meet your need because your heart is so good towards the needs of other people that God is telling you about. Amen? Now, the other reason, you know, I'm sharing this to, you know, sharing as speaking to my children. The other reason here is praying without believing that you've received it. And we see that in, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Mark eleven twenty-four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When ye pray, believe ye have received them, and ye shall have them. Whatsoever ye desire, Whatsoever you want God to do now in your life. I'm talking about your, you right now. The Bible says, believe that you receive them. You have received them. And then you shall have them. I'm asking God if I should share this, but I believe he wants me to share what, I want to, what, what, I, what I'm about to share with you right now. 
Somebody say desire. desire. See, when you desire something, it's always in your mind. Your desire is in a form of a thought. Is in your mind. So the Bible says when you pray, believe that you've received them and you would have whatsoever you pray for. So if you pray, for instance, that your application to an agency should be a yes for an answer, you got to believe that you've received a yes before the yes shows up. That means your thinking and your thoughts have to line up with what you've prayed about. You cannot afford to think contrary to what you've asked. Because if your thoughts does not line up with what you're praying about, you will not get results. You have to create a mental image of your desired result in your spirit. Come and experience the power and presence of God at our monthly healing and miracle services held on the last Friday of each month. Your miracle awaits. Let me make you understand this. There is power in you. Say, I got power on the inside of me. When the power in you is energized by His power, when the power of God energizes your power, the Aga power. You see, the Bible says, Paul said, I don't just preach the gospel in my human wisdom, but with the demonstration of the power of God. And the only way there can be demonstration of the power of God is that there is an energizing of the power that is on the inside of you to bring forth demonstration of the power of God. So tonight, there's going to be an energizing. There's going to be an energizing. When the Holy Ghost energizes the power in you, every sickness will fall off. You don't hear me. I said, when the Holy Ghost energizes the power in you, every demon will run off. Every cancer will drop off. Every sickness will drop off. Say, I got power. Now rise up as I got power.